everyone today's topic is on deep cervical fascia and we would also talk about uh, spatial spaces which are associated with the deep cervical fascia in the neck so the deep cervical fascia forms uh, investing layer so there are three parts of deep cervical fascia in the neck one is the investing layer then pre tracheal layer pre vertebral layer so the peripheral layer is the investing layer so here we are seeing the cross section in the neck at the level of thyroid gland so here is the thyroid gland and we know the outermost covering is the skin beneath the skin there is superficial fascia and within the superficial fascia the muscle which you are appreciating is the platysma muscle and the deep fascia that is the investing layer of uh, deep fascia present beneath the superficial fascia so the investing layer here this is the investing layer and the other forms of deep cervical fascia in the neck are pre tracheal and pre vertebral layer pre tracheal layer it is in front of the trachea enclosing the thyroid gland this is pre tracheal layer of deep cervical and the third is the pre vertebral layer which is in front of the vertebral column encircling uh, the vertebra and also the muscles associated with the vertebra this is pre vertebral layer so let us talk about first investing layer of deep cervical fascia attachment it is attached above to the external occipital protuberance so here you are seeing the posterior view of the skull cervical vertebra along with its ribs so here the projection is the external occipital protuberance so superiorly it attaches to the external occipital protuberance superior nuchal line of the occipital bone so on each side of the external occipital protuberance we are having superior nuchal and inferior nuchal lines so superior nuchal line i'm writing short forms and uh, inferiorly it is attached to the acromion process and spine of scapula so we can see the spine of scapula this is the spine and spine continues to form the acromial process so that is about the attachment of investing layer of deep cervical fascia on posterior aspect next we shall talk about the deep cervical uh, fascia attached along the mandible that is the anterior aspect so here is the lateral view of the skull so superiorly it is attached along the mandible mastoid process so here is the inferior border of the mandible base of the mandible and it attaches to the uh, mastoid process which lies posterior to the external occipital protuberance and it uh, inferiorly it attaches to the clavicle and manubrium sterni so clavicle is not appreciated that well but we can still say that uh, anteriorly here is the clavicle and in the midline is the manubrium sterni so here we can see the clavicle clavicle in the midline here we can see the manubrium sternum so that is about the attachment of inferior layer of deep cervical fascia attachment next uh, further talking about uh, the superficial investing layer of the deep cervical fascia it encircles the neck and splits to enclose the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius muscle and it also forms as the roof of posterior triangle of neck so we can see here the uh, the sternocleidomastoid is here sternocleidomastoid is here and we can trace the 
investing layer of deep cervical fascia which is splits to enclose the sternocleidomastoid anterior anterolaterally further it covers beneath the runs beneath the superficial fascia and we can see the other side sternocleidomastoid as well and posteriorly it encircles the trapezius muscle it encircles the trapezius muscle so i'm drawing the line here this is trapezius muscle so that is about the uh, enclosing the, and also it forms the uh, roof of posterior triangle so between sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius this gap is the posterior triangle so it forms the roof of posterior triangle and these are the muscles we can see they are forming the floor of posterior triangle of neck Investing layer of the deep cervical fascia, it continues in the face as parotid fascia because uh, in the face there is no deep cervical fascia, only in the parotid region it, uh, and masseter muscle, it covers the masseter and parotid gland as the uh, capsule covering the parotid gland. So let's see here, from the neck as it reaches till the angle of the mandible, that is the lower tip of the parotid gland near the apex of the parotid gland. It splits to form the superficial lamina and deeper lamina. So here we can see this is the parotid gland and which is covered by the superficial lamina of the deep cervical fascia and on the deeper aspect this is the deeper lamina. This is the deeper lamina. Superficial lamina it attaches superiorly to the zygomatic arch as paratidomesentric fascia. It is very thick and tough which is called as paratidomesentric fascia which does not allow the parotid gland to swell uh, if there is any abscess. On the deeper side, the deeper lamina, it is thin and loose and it gets thickened only between the styloid process and the mandible forming stylomandibular ligament. This stylomandibular ligament, it separates the parotid gland from submandibular salivary gland. And we can also see the deep cervical fascia. It also forms the false capsule of submandibular salivary gland as well. So we can see here, this is the hyoid bone. So it, as it reaches the hyoid bone, it splits again into two lamina to uh, enclose the submandibular salivary gland. And uh, this is the superficial lamina and this is the deeper lam lamina of the uh, deep cervical fascia. That is the investing layer of deep cervical. And finally, it attaches at the margins of mandibular fossa. We can see this is the submandibular fossa. So, it uh, attaches to the margins of mandibular fossa. So, that is about the deep cervical, investing layer of the deep cervical fascia in the face. Deep cervical fascia, as it reaches near the manubrium sterni, it splits itself to enclose a small facial space. Uh, which contains the lymph node. You can see here it contains the lymph node and it also contains the anterior jugular venous arch. The anterior jugular venous arch which is the communication between the two anterior jugular veins. So that is about the deep cervical fascia just above the uh, suprasternal notch. That is this notch is called as suprasternal notch. And the space which enclose, it encloses, it is called as the burns space. So further we shall continue with the pre-tracheal and pre-vertebral layers. So here the green one, what we are seeing is the investing layer. It is the investing layer of the deep cervical uh, fascia. And we saw the burn spaces here above the manubrium sterni. And we knew it attaches to the mandible, enclosing the submandibular gland, that is the submandibular space fossa. And uh, we shall talk, continue with the pretracheal layer. Pretracheal layer is the blue one which is shown here. So it invests along the trachea and the larynx. So we can see this is the trachea, and here is the larynx. And it attaches to the thyroid and cricoid cartilages. We can see it attaches to the thyroid and cricoid cartilages. And further it blends with the buccopharyngeal fascia uh, in the neck. It uh, uh, 
uh, in the buccal region and in the pharynx it is continuous to form buccopharyngeal fissure and inferiorly we can see it is continuous with the fibrous pericardium of the heart so inferiorly it is continuous with the fibrous pericardium of the heart next about the prevertebral layer prevertebral layer it attaches superiorly to the base of the skull we can see here it attaches superiorly to the base of the skull and partly it attaches also to the external occipital protuberance which is not shown it also attaches to the external occipital protuberance and it is in front of the vertebra uh, it is uh, front of the cervical vertebra where it continues to form the anterior longitudinal ligament which is present in front of the vertebral column so further it continues to form the anterior longitudinal ligament in the vertebral column so here is the transverse section of the neck uh, at the level of thyroid gland so we can see the pretracheal layer it is in enclosing the trachea invest in front of the trachea and the vent of the trachea and also it encloses the thyroid gland as i said earlier it encloses the thyroid gland and it also contributes in the formation of carotid sheet it also contributes partly in the formation of carotid sheet so pretracheal layer because the thyroid gland is invested by the pretracheal layer so during deglutition the thyroid gland moves up and down because of its attachment to the trachea via the pretracheal layer which is called as ligament of berry or suspensory ligament of berry so that is about the pretracheal layer and i said earlier that the pretracheal layer it uh, continues as the buccopharyngeal fascia and we know it contributes in the formation of carotid sheath and it invest in front of the larynx and trachea and it is attached to the cricoid and uh, thyroid cartilages so talking about uh, further uh, spaces which are present in the neck and the fascia surrounding these spaces so ala fascia so the ala fascia is uh, here we can see the transverse section of the neck uh, so where we can appreciate the alar fascia which is in front of the pre uh, vertebral fascia it is the anterior part which is like a septa separating two spaces ds is nothing but the ds is nothing but the dangerous space and rps is the retropharyngeal space so the space these two spaces are separated by alar fascia so it is Uh, coronally oriented sheet and it is separated from the prevertebral fascia by loose connective tissue which fills a space called as danger space so ds is the danger space so here in the sagittal section we can see the red color space is the danger space posterior to the danger space it is limited by prevertebral fascia and anterior to the danger space it is limited by the ala fascia and inferiorly we can see the danger space continues to uh, form a uh, space uh, which continues till the level of coccyx the retropharyngeal space continues till the level of coccyx or prevertebral space it is called prevertebral so this is the prevertebral space and uh, next about the retropharyngeal space so retropharyngeal space anteriorly it is limited by the buccopharyngeal fascia this is the buccopharyngeal fascia we can see and the yellow space is the retropharyngeal space and uh, buccopharyngeal fascia it blends with the pretracheal fascia it is the uh, continuation of the pretracheal layer of deep cervical fascia and uh, laterally the alar uh, fascia it attaches to the transverse process of the cervical vertebra and we can see it also contributes in the formation of carotid sheath as well we can see here carotid sheath enclosing the internal jugular vein common carotid artery and the vagus nerve so carotid sheath is contributed by all the three layers that is the prevertebral layer investing layer of deep cervical fascia and also the pretracheal layer and the spaces which are associated is the prevertebral space which is the space between the Uh, pre vertebral fascia and the vertebral body 
and this prevertebral space it continues till the level of coccyx and any pathology associated with the intervertebral disc or the tb of spine or any pus collection usually it collects within the prevertebral space next about the uh, danger space danger space uh, continues till the level of uh, c6 to t4 it continues till the level of c6 to t4 further the lr fascia continues with the visceral uh, fascia in the thoracic region and in front of the dangerous space is the retropharyngeal space retropharyngeal space is also filled with the loose areolar tissue and contains some retropharyngeal group of lymph nodes and this uh, retropharyngeal space we can see it ends at the level of c7 c6 or c7 where it blends with the uh, fascia lr fascia both the fascias will blend here inferiorly so that is about the lr fascia and we can appreciate the prevertebral sp uh, space and uh, then the uh, danger space then retropharyngeal space and buccopharyngeal space it is the anterior limiting of the retropharyngeal space and retropharyngeal space extends till the level of c7 and uh, danger space also extends till the level of c6 to t4 level let's talk about the carotid sheath as well so carotid sheath is uh, uh, actually contributed by the uh, three layers of deep cervical fascia that is the prevertebral pretracheal and investing layer of the deep cervical fascia so we can see here the green lining is the carotid sheath which is enclosing uh, the major neurovascular structures common carotid artery internal jugular vein and vagus nerve interspersing in between them posteriorly and it also contains internal carotid artery which is a, a branch of common carotid artery in its superior part it is pierced by 9th 10th uh, cranial nerves that is glossopharyngeal nerve and it is pierced by the hypoglossal nerve and spinal accessory nerve as well and it uh, uh, attaches above to the base of the skull so we know the uh, three uh, layers of the deep cervical fascia attaches above to the base of the skull so carotid sheath attaches above to the base of the skull and inferiorly it blends with the fascia of the thoracic region and it uh, uh, you can see it is highlighted here in the transverse section of the neck showing its contents and further so further continuing with the uh, carotid sheath here we can see in this image the contents of carotid sheath as internal carotid vagus and internal jugular and its lower part common carotid internal uh, that is uh, vagus and internal jugular and in the cranial aspect that is the upper part of the carotid sheath it is pierced by the accessory nerve glossopharyngeal nerve 9th cranial nerve accessory nerve 11th cranial nerve and hypoglossal nerve 12th cranial nerve so these three nerves pierces the carotid sheath and lie as the content of carotid sheath in its upper aspect and in the neck we can see within the anterior wall of the carotid sheath it is related to ansa cervicalis and along the posterior wall of the carotid sheath it is related to sympathetic chain it is related to sympathetic chain on its posterior aspect so further discussing as the spaces in the neck so we can just summarize once the spaces in the neck so the central compartment is the visceral space compartment which is enclosed by the pretracheal uh, layer and it, it is also called as pretracheal space it is also called as pretracheal space pretracheal space and uh, it is also contains the esophagus esophagus and carotid space is the carotid sheath which we already discussed and retropharyngeal space lies posterior to the pharynx and esophagus so it is also called as retroesophageal space which contains the loose areolar tissue and danger space posterior to the retropharyngeal space which is enclosed between the alar fascia and the prevertebral fascia is the dangerous space and why the danger space it is called because uh, the any uh, infection because this danger space communicates below with the mediastinum any infection of the uh, 
uh, respiratory tract or the pharynx, it can spread easily into the mediastinum, resulting mediastinitis. That is the reason this space is called as the danger space. It is the third space uh, posterior compartment of retropharyngeal. It is posterior to the retropharyngeal space. And the last space which is just in front of the vertebral column is called as prevertebral space and it encloses the prevertebral and paraspinal space and most importantly any inflammation of the vertebra or any infection of like TB spine, pus collection or uh, intervertebral disc inflammation, the collection of the fluid will be seen in along the prevertebral space. So here are few questions. The structure not enclosed by the carotid sheath. Uh, so internal carotid artery, we know it is a content. Vagus is a content. And cervical sympathetic chain, it lies posterior to the carotid sheath. So the answer is the cervical sympathetic chain. So this is the answer. Next, the fascia around the nerve bundle of the brachial plexus are derived from. So, we, I, I forgot to say about this during the session. The, if you see here, the prevertebral fascia, uh, the, which is the fascia around the brachial plexus and is called as the axillary sheath and uh, the prevertebral fascia continues to form the axillary sheath enclosing the brachial plexus. So, the answer is prevertebral fascia. So, let us address this question. Uh, all is true about the cervical fascia except so ligament berry fixes the thyroid gland to the cricoid it is true prevertebral fascia forms the roof of posterior triangle just think it forms the floor of posterior triangle not the roof so roof is formed by the investing layer of deep cervical fascia the floor is formed by the prevertebral fascia covering the paravertebral muscles so which forms the floor of the triangle so prevertebral fascia forms the floor not the roof so answer is b here and remaining we can see answer cervical is present in the anterior wall of carotid that is also true carotid sheath we know it is formed by pretracheal prevertebral and it is also formed by the investing layer of deep cervical fascia so this completes the uh, anatomy of uh, deep cervical fascia and the spaces associated with the deep cervical fascia i hope i made this topic clear thank you